For my application project, I designed, built, and programmed a working brew-in-the-bag type brewing system designed to brew an all-grain beer recipe. The system uses a PLC equipped with a human-machine interface touchscreen for control. To heat, the water a heating element was installed in a stainless steel kettle. The heating element is controlled with a solid-state relay that switches the 240 volts on and off as directed by the PLC. Also installed was a ball valve spigot and RTD. From the ball valve spigot, a silicon tube is attached, and at the other end is a female quick-release connection. This can be connected to the brewing pump that is controlled with another solid-state relay that is controlled by the PLC to circulate the water during the sanitation, cleaning, strike, and mash cycles. Also connected in line with the pump is a second RTD. This allows for an accurate reading temperature while the water is recirculating through the system. The RTDs are wired to transmitters that use the change in resistance to send a 4 to 20 milliamp signal to the PLC. The quick release can also be attached to a plate chiller to cool the brew after boiling. From the main menu of the HMI, you have several screens and choices to choose from. The first of which is the brewing parameters. Different beer recipes call for different times and temperatures. Using Recipe Plus in Rockwell's Factory Talk View program, I gave the user access to the strike and mash temperatures, the mash and boil duration, as well as timers for hop additions. During, from this menu, the user can create a new recipe by editing an existing recipe. Once the recipe is created, the user can upload the numbers to the PLC. Once the parameters are set, the user can run a sanitation cycle. The sanitation display guides the user through a checklist of interactive buttons. One verifies the kettle is filled with sanitized water. Another verifies that the outlet hose is connected to the pump. Next, another verifies that the lid is on the kettle, and lastly, that the spigot is open and the pump is primed. After, and only after these are selected, can you press the start cycle. Once the cycle is started, the pump will run for five minutes, circulating the sanitizer through the system. When the cycle is over, the user is instructed to place the lid on the bucket instead of the kettle and run the pump until the kettle is empty. The bucket of sanitized water can then be used throughout the brewing process. A similar process is used when selecting the cleanup procedures. During this process, a cleaning powder is mixed with the water instead of a sanitizer. Also, instead of filling the bucket with water at the end, the water is run through the plate chiller. Next from the home screen, the user can select the start brew display. Here the user is once again prompted to verify the physical parts are ready for the brewing process. Then the user may proceed to the brewing process. In the main brewing display, there is a series of buttons for the user to follow along with a visible mash timer, boil timer, and hops 1, 2, and 3 timers. As well, there, is, there are indicator lights. There is also a trending display that shows the PID set points, PID percent output from 1 to 100, and follows the temperature reading that is received by the resistance temperature detectors. Once the user starts a process, the strike subroutine is enabled and the pump is turned on. The subroutine uses a PID loop that's output is sent to a split range time propor proportional instruction. Since the heating element is controlled with a solid state relay, it only has the option to be on or off. The time proportional instruction takes a percent output and changes it to a time on. For example, if the cycle time was 10 seconds and the output of the PID was 60%, the STRP instruction would send the output to the relay to switch on for 6 seconds and then off for 4 seconds. Once the strike temperature has been reached, and only then can the user select add drains. This cuts power to the heater and to the pump. The user can then lower the grains into the heated water. 
Once the grains are set in the user can press the start mash process button. This starts the mash timer, which starts the mash subroutine and turns the pump on for the designated time. Once the timer finishes, the user is notified and the next step is to remove the grains. After removing the grains and allowing the grains to drip from the bag, it is time to start the boil. Pressing the start boil button will initiate a timer that starts the boil subroutine. This temperature control does not use a PID to regulate the temp. Instead, once the RTD senses the boiling temperature, the heating element is cycled on for 4 seconds and off for 2 seconds. This keeps a rolling boil, yet prevents overboiling. When the boil timer is started, so is the hop timers. The hop timers let you know, with the indicator lights, when to add additions. Once the boil is done, it is time to take the plate chiller and connect one end to the spigot and the other to the carboy. Also, water is passed through the chiller and the temperature of the brew is dropped from a boiling to a fermentable 80 to 85 degrees. Lastly, the yeast is added to the airlock and inserted in the lid, sealing it from contaminants and allowing the CO2 to exit the carboy. In a few hours, the start of the fermentation is visible and the CO2 bubbles from the carboy through the airlock.